recorded. What we're going to be talking about today is just that there's, you know, 24 different panels on the iMAID and it takes some time to uh, figure out which panel is is important or which panel you want to use for a patient or for a, a problem at hand. But the most pragmatic uh, um, <clears throat> panels clinically for routine use are the, uh, the reactivity panels, the allergen panel and the main reactivity. And today I, I, I want to focus on that. Like uh, what, what, how do you interpret and make decisions on uh, um, what to treat and how do these things present, you know? So, uh, <clears throat> so here's a scan result and the treatment uh, a decision uh, of a established uh, patient, okay, who already had a bunch of allergy treatments. And <clears throat> I don't remember exactly how long and, and all that, but anyway, they've had quite a few uh, treatments and they were doing really well with their inflammation and allergies. And so they came in and they said, well, it looks like my allergies are coming back. Uh, and so we did a scan and here's what came up. So the reason why the allergies came back, and you know, don't, don't, don't ask me about the mechanism of all that because it's complicated. Uh, 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 where underlying infections, in this case a parasite infection, Okay, so we, we treated that and we had this person back on, on track rather quickly. Um, so, you, you, you know, you have to keep an open mind. So we, we didn't need to go back and treat all these allergies that had already been taken care of. Uh, we really just had to uh, do a scan, assess the situation and realize that these, these infections kind of triggered some of the old, you know, epigenetic weaknesses that allowed um, the old allergies to reappear. Uh, so let me ask, any, uh, anybody have a particular question about this particular slide or this particular story? So then, then we'll move on, we'll move on. All right, here's another person, another case, okay? The complaint was just dizziness. And as a matter of fact, uh, well, so, so Heidi is asking how many, how many times did I run this to get results? Well, I only run it once. You only want to run these things once. You can't run it multiple times because you don't like the results or something. You, you may run it again another day or at the next visit, but as far as you only want to run these things, these, these uh, reactivity tests one time on, on a particular day and then work with the results, work with the results that you, um, you know, that are in front of you. And then if that doesn't resolve it, you know, they'll, well, they'll be coming back and then something else may transpire. Um, but, but this is just, this is one, uh, this is one, this is one scan and uh, one treatment. So, you know, the question is, why did I add the other thing? Well, uh, that is that, that that is from muscle testing. So you can't really put all these things in. You want to kind of, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you want to uh, make the treatment as effective as possibly as possible. So I use muscle testing, but you can also just use your instincts or your, uh, you know, your intuition at your level and put it together. Th that the parasites are probably an issue is pretty obvious. You know, I don't remember exactly why the virus wasn't put in. Um, uh, that I, I, I don't remember because um, that would be probably a pretty good possibility that would go in. Um, What's also not in this particular uh, uh, shot, screenshot, is the combinations here. Uh, we usually just put all of them in, 
we might as well just put all of them in um, except except maybe hormones you want to be more conservative um, uh, next case is uh, just a patient you know calling in and saying she's you know uh, being very dizzy and um, you know being concerned and um, an acute situation so the, the scan uh, again showed uh, a bunch of parasites so that's that's what we treated and here by the way uh, here here are the, uh, the combinations we did with that with that particular um, um, with, that, with that particular uh, um, patient. But what's interesting about that is uh, uh, on the same day, you know, another patient called in with the same symptoms, acute dizziness. So usually, you know, it's not uncommon that you, uh, you know, we look for these kind of things, you know, because certain stuff goes around, you know, and multiple people will show up with the flu virus on the same day or definitely the same week. And this happened to be the very same day, two separate people, unrelated, called in with uh, <clears throat> acute dizziness. So I figured they probably have exactly the same thing, right? Well, they didn't. Uh, uh, this one was, was different, you know, this was a bacterial infection. But both times the dizziness was due to an infection. You know, and the combinations were slightly different. So you don't have to necessarily stress yourself out with muscle testing all that. You can just put them all in. Okay, I, you know, specify um, um, just that's, that's just what I do, but you don't have to. But, but rather than not putting them in because you're not sure which, just put them all in. Because they're all important, okay? Uh, uh, this designation BVF is uh, mind-body balance. Uh, which is more of an emotional component to the whole equation. Acid is digestive acid, space is digestive enzymes, DNA is a vector towards, ju just a general vector towards your DNA. Uh, RNA uh, is the copying mechanism, the, the transcription mechanism within the DNA, within, inside the, the nucleus of the cell. Hypothalamus represents the nervous system, okay, and those are just the major organs. So this is, uh, these are all, th these last three screenshots where are all allergen panel results and then you right click on the uh, comprehensive database uh, uh, result and, and you get this custom data option, you know, where you can, rather than doing uh, the, the default feedback, which has been red, yellow and blue here, uh, you can put your custom treatment together and select what you want to select. In this case, we selected these bacteria. All right. So same day, same symptoms, but two different causes in a way. You know, ultimately they were kind of the same. They both were due to infections, right? Um, which is, by the way, a big problem. Infections are, you know, we, we don't realize. Um, how oh, anyway, uh, keep, keeping the body free of, you know, of infection is quite the balancing act. Okay, so here, um, the, 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 what, what I mentioned, what I want to mention, so this is an allergen panel test. This is before, uh, before right-clicking. Oh no, this already right-clicked also, sorry. Yeah, uh, so for example, when you you know when you know that a certain a person has a certain problem, let's say you know they have Lyme or you know they have Bartonella, especially after you've discovered it, uh, you know you don't necessarily always want to wait until it shows up again in a scan. I mean, you, you know that it's there, so then so then you want to sometimes search for it and put it in the. Um, and put in a treatment basket. Uh, so anyway, I'll come back to that. But r right now with this uh, person here, you know, it took three treatments uh, and three scans. Uh, now, again, you don't want to force a result by just scanning over and over again until you hope you get this, the, the result that you're looking for. You know, you have to treat other things too. You know, you need to treat uh, all, all the uh, allergies and things like that. 
But the, the thing is, this person I was suspecting, Epstein Barr, she probably had thyroid issues. Uh, oh no, she knew, she knew that she had Epstein Barr chronically for years. Uh, probably had antibodies so tested and it was positive. And you know, but people are unable, unable to get rid of these infections. Uh, so, you know, it took three, on the third visit and the third scan, you know, it showed up in the results. Okay, so I'm going into the program here real quick. I want to show you something. Okay. Um, I'm going to skip everything. I'll go right here. So, so let's say you know that this person has uh, the Epstein Barr virus and you want to bring it in the treatment. Okay. And um, <clears throat> uh, let's go straight to the, the um, uh, custom treatment. So I right click for it. Uh, so maybe you are uh, doing. Um, an allergy treatment, so maybe not. Uh, but what you want to do now is you want to add Epstein Barr virus, right? Because you know this person has it, and you want to repeat you know, with these you know, kind of immune treatments. You, if they're chronic, you know, you have to repeat the, the treatment uh, whenever you see the patient to keep to get the immune system back on the job, focused on the job of getting rid of that uh, chronic infection. So then, so you've got your other treatment here, right? Let's say you, you're going to do iron or something. Okay, so you close it here. You, you go to the search bar here, put in Epstein-Barr virus, for example. Search for it. Okay, and there it is. And I'll right click and I'll put it, and I'll put it into the basket. Okay, that's, so that's how you can add things that were not in the scan, but you want to put them in, in your treatment. Okay, whatever it is. Uh, uh, you think it's, uh, you know, Bart Bartonella is one that really takes sometimes a long time to. Okay, so now you have actually four options. And, but in any case, um, this is how you would add something that hasn't shown up in your scan, um, but you want to keep the focus on treating that. All right, so now. Uh, Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to have to reopen this all together. Uh, let's go back here. Is that where we were? Yes. All right. Any, uh, any particular question about this little thing I just mentioned here? With, you know, searching for something? Yeah, this last thing that you just mentioned has been one of the most powerful things I've, I've already been doing, is to go back and search something that didn't come up on the allergen or the reactivity test. Right, yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's, it's an important, uh, uh, you know, thing to keep in mind because let's say you're working on a chronic Lyme infection or a chronic Bartonella or a chronic Epstein-Barr. I mean, I have people that were literally born with Epstein-Barr uh, or Lyme, but including myself. I think, I've, you know, both my, my father and my grandfather on, a, on my father's side had, had Lyme, even so I didn't know it, so it's, it's kind of in my DNA. So. It takes a while to get that out of there. So whenever you do a treatment, you want to maybe add that for a while, maybe for even a year or two, you know. Uh, but in the meantime, you don't. It's not the only thing you want to be doing. You want to keep going with the allergies and the inflammations and all the other stuff that has to happen on an acute basis, and to continue the method. Uh, so it allows you, you know, to combine acute with chronic, you know, and uh, make, make the treatments most, most effective. All right, so, so this is another, uh, so this is the main reactivity test, uh, uh, wh where you also have that right click option, but this is just a scan result. Okay, so as far as the IMAG algorithm is concerned, with this software, what it's most powerful for, or, uh, you know, is, detecting infections and, and, and you know you have to uh, we look at infections a little different than the mainstream does it's not 
all like uh, square and, and medical. We don't look at them at a medical sense because there's a whole not a world. We're looking at it energetically. And uh, that's also helpful, you know, for legal reasons. But we have to use that language. So, uh, but these are all these are all homeopathic kind of frequencies of uh, uh, pathogens. Okay, that we're that we're dealing with here. Um, so we're not really. Uh, uh, so we're just communicating with the immune system on the um, energetic level. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, but having said that, uh, uh, because it's kind of, you know, uh, um, only medical professionals can deal with infections as such uh, legally. So uh, it's, it's kind of a, a, a funny situation. There. So, uh, but nevertheless, uh, we have to name it something. So uh, officially these are called, uh, by the way, they are called no -sos. You know, no -sos are homeopathic frequencies of pathogens. Uh, but what's, what's really um, interesting or, or, or striking in this scan, and you have to develop an eye for these kinds of things, and uh, unless you know about these things, you won't notice it. But first you have to know, and then you will notice. So cytomegalovirus is, uh, by, by the way, in the same family as uh, Ebola virus. Um, they have the name. It's uh, the a month. Uh, this is a very, very powerful scan. And remember, all these scans are functional. They show you what the body is doing at the moment of the scan. And obviously, in this scan, the immune system is involved heavily. You know, the interferon is number one, you know, which is a, uh, a, an immune factor that, that, that the body produces to fight mm, infections. Now, at the time, I didn't know this, 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 this screenshot is it's a couple years old, but frozen shoulder is very much related, often, often related to chronic infections. Most often it's part of the but you know, remember, remember to look for that if you run into a frozen shoulder. Uh, but cytomegalovirus causes glioblastoma, okay, that's established medical knowledge. Uh, most glioblastomas, which, um, let me take this thing down here. Uh, uh, glioblastomas. Most glioblastomas are full with cytomegalovirus DNA. That's how we know about it. Uh, and most glioblastomas are fatal. There's no real good, um, uh, you know, remedy for it. Uh, it's a very nasty, very deadly uh, uh, cancer. So, <clears throat> so you have. Interferon, yes, yeah, cytomegalovirus, and then you already have a cancerous kind of process showing up uh, energetically, right? It's regular cancer, there's car carposis sarcoma, it's a cancer, and then you have glioblastoma. So, you know, when I saw the scan, I went like, oh my God, uh, uh, I better you know, first of all, treat this virus here as an immune treatment, but then also kind of gently explain to the person in front of me that uh, we, we may want to uh, follow up on this a few times to make sure that that's taken care of. So we don't, uh, and I, I personally have lost, uh, you know, s several of my patients to glioblastoma. Uh, and I've, I've warned myself that uh, that's not going to happen anymore. Uh, you know, these scan results can tell you a lot of, a lot, a lot of things that are uh, rather important if you can recognize them and spot them. And it takes a little bit of experience, and so the more you do it, the, you know, the, the better you get at it. So uh, I don't exactly remember what we did, but uh, we just focused on the cytomegalovirus. We didn't focus on the, on the, uh, on the cancer because uh, that's basically would be secondary, but we very much focused on the cytomegalovirus and we followed through. I mean, this person, you know, I, was, I was able to talk this person into you know, doing a few treatments and <clears throat> making sure that uh, checking that that cytomegalovirus didn't react anymore. In other words, it was gone from the body 100%. Uh, and it took a little while. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of viruses that cause all different kinds of cancers. You know, HPV, 
you know, about the lung virus causes you know, a lot of female cancers. Um, Epstein Barr virus also causes cancer, even so it's more thyroid related. You know, I've got more of thyroid issues, but um, um, you know, it causes uh, Hodgkin's uh, lymphoma and stuff like that. That's Epstein Barr. Uh, so it's always good to look out for these things and make sure you, to get rid of these infections 100% in, in, a, in an attempt to, you know, let's say, prevent cancer. And um, yeah, there you have. Okay, uh, a little bit out of sequence here. Uh, however, that's good. Yeah. So this here, uh, this here screenshot is, well, okay. So this is a uh, this is a patient. It's a sixty-something-year-old uh, woman, and um, you know she came. She's an established patient, and she went through this crisis in, in her. Well, with her body and with her relationship with her husband, and she was really just kind of. Uh, well, they were going to separate, and 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 they did temporarily for you know a couple of weeks here and a couple of weeks there. And anyway, she really struggled, and she had no sex drive whatsoever, and it's just, uh, it was kind of, we were struggling for a while. But anyway, so uh, we worked on things, we worked on allergies, we worked on our hormone balance, we did some bioidentical hormones, and eventually uh, she tested positive for a bracelet, you know, the energy bracelets that, that, that I do, and the genes, called it the happiness gene. I think it's DRD4, it's in kid six or so, it's, it's in the software. Uh, and she was wearing a bracelet. And, and anyway, so she came back, this is just recently, maybe a month ago or so, and this was her scan. This was her scan result, okay? So uh, look at that. So there's one, two, three, four, catechol, I mean, you could, you could call that a gene too, you know, five, five genes and androgen receptor, androgen receptor, androgens are sex hormones. So, uh, so her genes were extremely busy, you know, extremely, extremely active uh, that day, and, and, and she was happy, and, and, and anyway, it was kind of, it was funny, but nothing needed to be treated. None of these genes needed to be treated. These were all, um, uh, this just showed her functional status epigenetically at, at that moment. And then, so anyway, uh, uh, we realized that she didn't really need a treatment uh, anymore, uh, an energetic treatment that day, and whatever. And so finally, um, I just I said, hey, uh, so, so what's going on with you? You, you? You're doing all right? And she said, and I mean, it almost knocked me off. She, she, she turned around, she smiled and said, yeah, the marriage is going great, with a big smile on her face. Uh, I thought, wow, this is awesome. Uh, so get your updates. You know, the, the, the version is ready to be downloaded. Anyway, just email you, you know, email me where you're at with this. A lot of you guys that just bought new systems, you get it for free. Of course, everybody else is 50 bucks. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, while we're talking about the upgrade, so for you folks out there that have the old, so-called an apostrophe, you know, the old uh, iMate box, uh, you need to have, you know, my tech guy Tom has to come onto your computer remotely and program the old box so it can communicate with the new software. It takes about a minute, okay, but uh, you just have to jump through the hoops to make that happen. So we'll do that by email, just, just email me. Okay. So, so there you have it, a uh, very, very important um, kind of feedback about this person's uh, status here, you know. Um, so, you know, some of you may say, um, uh, are asking, when do you know that uh, a, a pathogen is delirious, del del deleterious, you know, or it needs to be treated? Well, here's the thing, okay, so a, a gene does not necessarily mean that it needs to be treated because it comes up in a scan. It just simply means that um, that it's happening, okay? It, it, more often than not, it's happening for a good reason. So maybe 30% of the time that gene is a problem, and that's why you really need to develop some kind of a, uh, 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 
an intuitive method to figure out whether to put certain things into a treatment or not. You know, I use muscle testing. <coughs> uh, uh, but but if you have a pathogen, you know, there's no functionality about the flu virus. If it's there, it's there. It's because it's there. It's physically there, and the person may be only a little bit sick. The person may be a lot sick. The person may be even not be sick yet at all, and you know, may become sick tomorrow or the day after. <clears throat> but uh, uh, and that's why I'm saying the what the software is most powerful at is to literally pinpoint. I don't like to use the word diagnose, because that's only medical doctors can diagnose, but pinpoint, you know, uh, uh, infectious challenges. Uh, and then that allows us to have a conversation with the immune treatment and, and, uh, and, and, and focus the immune system on getting rid of the virus, okay? So, for example, so what's, what's this story here? Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, so here's a patient. The complaint was low back pain, acute low back pain. No idea about the flu. Didn't, didn't feel bad or, you know, it's just the low back hurt, which is, you know, a lot of times, like when I, when I have, when I'm working, when, when, when I encounter the flu virus, I often get like these weird kidney pains that are, that are very uncomfortable. And, uh, you know, the kidney, kidney inflammation goes down into the lower back. So uh, it's directly, you know, lower back and kidneys are connected. Um, <clears throat> But anyway, uh, you know, the complaint was low back pain, but she, this person didn't need an adjustment or anything, you know, she needed an immune treatment. Uh, and that's what she got, you know. I don't know if we did a, an allergy kind of thing, uh, you know, sunflower seed would be about the only food component that would come up, uh, which you may want to do at the same time if it's an established patient. Uh, but let's say, um, let's say you want to do, uh, uh, that was virus 32, right? Uh, let's say you want to treat somebody for the flu. You know, it's very simple. Okay. Uh, you put that uh, the virus in, in the treatment basket, and then, um, okay, and then, and then you add your uh, additional feedbacks, okay? So you can really add all of them. Uh, and maybe that's just what we should safe as, 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 a, as a rule. But uh, what, what you definitely want to do with the virus is put in RNA. You may want to get the nervous system or, uh, uh, involved, you know, you want to put the organs in there. Uh, yeah, yeah, you just put them all in. It, it should, you, know, you know, I don't know that you uh, necessarily need digestive acids, but you just put them all in. So this is a basic immune treatment for the flu. Uh, it will work big time. What it does is it just talks to the immune system literally with these frequencies. It, it resonates with the immune system and it focuses the immune system uh, on, on this particular <clears throat> on this particular immune challenge, right? So rather than, you've heard about the incubation period, so rather than, um, you know, waiting for three days until you're sick, uh, <clears throat> You know, you get the immune system going right now, and the person will I mean, he never even get sick um, because you know it will be. It, it's a numbers game also because in three days there's going to be you know millions of more viruses that have to be killed. Well, if we could get rid of the virus that are present today, you know, it's a uh, it's less numbers, literally, it's less numbers, so it goes much faster. Okay. So this person here with the low back pain got a, an immune treatment. Uh, it, it, you know, uh, looking at it from here now, I don't remember exactly what the treatment was, was, but I would probably put, put mycoplasma pneumonia would probably be in the treatment as well. You know, we would combine those two because, you know, they're somewhat, they're somewhat in the same ballpark, you know with these combinations that we just talked about. So here's like one of these where you where you really say, wow, man, this, yeah, this, this software just does all the work. I don't really have to do much of anything. Uh, you know, because if you look all the major things, I mean, you could have just done the default uh, feedback and, uh, you know, you would have really covered it, you know. Uh, but all these top things, they all went into the treatment. The only thing that, uh, in this case, 
I must have tested out, you know, was that choline was not a food allergy thing, but a rather a severe deficiency. A severe deficiency. The person really needed choline, which is a, a B vitamin. Uh, I forget exactly whether it's vitamin B21 or I forget. One of those. Okay, so once in a while, uh, uh, this algorithm really is not ideal to find medicines to give, but if it's a severe deficiency, it will pick them up at times, okay? Uh, if it's a severe deficiency, it can pick them up. Um, you know, but not everybody has severe deficiencies. Some people have just very mild deficiencies, and sometimes you just want to give like immune support, for example, with a flu, uh, which could be, you know, cardiac oil or... Uh, or what have you, um, you know, um, or thymus support for the thymus claim. So, so just keep that in mind and find a way to sort these things out intuitively. You know, is choline an allergy issue or is it actually a deficiency? You know, like these things in here in the treatment basket, those are, those are inflammatory or allergy issues, vitamin K and pistachio. And it's not, not always is a scan like that, you know, sometimes you only get one or two or three things out of the scan and the rest you kind of have to add yourself somehow or it's just, it's okay to do just one thing, you know, if, if that's the important thing, right, and, and uh, what was it, you know, like here to do the, the, the flu virus, that's certainly worth the treatment all by itself. Okay, so this patient comes in with a sinusitis, uh, you know, so usually we think with sinusitis, with sinuses, it's always allergies, right? The airborne type of allergies or so. Uh, and if this person would have gone to the medical doctor, they most likely would have ended up with antibiotics. Uh, but it was neither. It was not uh, bacterial, nor was it, um, nor was it, um, you know, an allergy, it was, was secondary to an allergy. It was just a, a viral um, thing that went for this person just in the sinuses. And if it would have continued, it may have gone down, you know, into the upper chest. And, <clears throat> but uh, we caught it early and we treated it and she, she was fine. And by the way, you see, you can see how the immune system is involved, interleukin-1. To look forward, those are immune factors, you know. So the immune system is already busy, it already knows it's there, it's already dealing with it. Well, we're just giving it another, uh, another focus and urgency, you know. And, and these are things that you want to check if you're looking for combinations. Uh, you want to make you want to ask, uh, so for acute infections, you know, the one that comes up more often. They're not as interleukin-5 for me. So in a situation like this, if you're wondering, so because interleukin-1 and interleukin-4 seem already to be engaged quite a bit. So my question would be, when I'm looking for combinations, do, um, um, is interleukin-5 indicated? Should I add that here? You know, as an extra focus. So, um, so if you wanted to add that, uh, you know, you type it in here, LinkedIn, dash five. There it is. And then we go back to your panel here and you add it. So now you have to look at five here as a combination. Now this Papesia here, that is a bacteria, but that's more a chronic thing usually, you know. So sometimes these things pop up. I don't remember exactly what happened in this case, whether we revisited we that later down the road uh, at another appointment or whether it was a one time. Sometimes these things just come, on, uh, come up once, you know, and it's just part of this infectious profile here at that moment. Uh, but, uh, you know, Papisa doesn't come up all that often. You know, I find that that Bartonella and Epstein Barr and Lyme are much more common inside of megalovirus as chronic infections, you know, infections that go on for years, cause all kinds of problems. Another example, uh, when you don't have, you know, when you can't listen to the body, you have to go with what you know and what you see. So, I mean, you look at this, you could say, oh my God, yeah, that's, a, that's Lyme. That's, you've probably been bit by a tick. Well, that person was bit by something, 
but it wasn't a, a tick, it was a sand flea at the beach. This was at the, uh, on the ocean, or, or New Jersey or Maryland or somewhere. And, and here's the scan. Again, you can see how the immune system is engaged, right? Interleukins are active, they're happening. Uh, so these Leishmania, Donovani, and early Kia uh, bugs, you know, they're nasty bugs. They're just as bad as, uh, you know, as Lyme or something. Uh, but they're just a little different, and uh, you know, we found it. We supported the immune. We focused the immune system on those bugs that were really there, and you know, this this first she cleared up rather fast, rather quickly. So that's that's what's that's a, a one one big advantage of these um, of these. Uh, of the allergen panel in particular of these reactivity tests is that you get a functional picture of what's going on in the body and amongst that is your immune function is reflected really well, really well. It's not just your digestive system, but your, uh, your immune system. It's very strong in that regard. Uh, and you can really let yourself be guided by that, you know? Don't, don't get too worried about, well, Whatever, you know, Leishmania, Donovani, isn't that blah, 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 blah. The, 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 the words don't mean all that much. It's the, the energy frequencies behind those words. And all we know that these, these bacteria are nasty. They come from bug bites of one sort or another. I've all, also seen these from spider bites and those type of things. Maybe certain mosquito bites. Of course, now we have these, uh, you know, we have these... Um, these genes show up, we have these genes show up. And of course that can create some confusion <laughs> because, right, so as I was saying, with, with, with the genes, it's not so much 100% uh, certain or, or you know, a very high likelihood that it should be treated as it is with, um, as, as, as it is with pathogens. Um, so if you know if you have Burka one or two, let's take two, let's see that should be well okay. okay, so if one if one of these genes comes up, you know, uh, in the scan, now now, now does, does that mean that you know you you're in danger of developing breast cancer or and all this jazz or ovarian cancer or you know female cancers i mean you have to realize so let me see if, if we did a good job here in explaining there are human genes involved with cell growth cell division and cell repair so that's the most important thing okay cell repair is what they are gene repair genes so uh the mainstream has called them oncogenes, but they're really uh, 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 gene repair genes. So, so they, they prevent cancer, right? Uh, now, if you have a mutation in, this, in these genes, of course, that predisposes you to a higher risk of cancer. Uh, okay? But, 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 but the, um, um, the scan here, the scan result doesn't really give you any insight on that. Uh, you know, you have to do some genetic testing to find that out. Theoretically, you know, if one of those genes comes up in your scan, that basically means it's active at the moment. And that theoretically is a good thing because, uh, you know, your gene repair genes are active. They're doing what they're supposed to do. They're repairing. Your DNA is being repaired at every second of every day, uh, you know, 24-7, 365. <clears throat> and so it gets to be a little subtle. And again, that's when you have to develop uh, instincts, some, some intuition to figure out and, and look at the other things. So if you see human papilloma virus pop up together with BRCA2 in one scan, you know, that would be something, or even if it's a couple scans apart, that will be, that will catch my eye because that would say, well, but I would be more concerned about the virus than I would be about the gene. So I would muscle test, does the gene need to go in for treatment? And if yes, I would, you know, but I would, I would really pay attention to the virus and talk to the immune system about getting rid of that virus and follow that and make sure it's gone uh, 100%, no matter how many treatments it takes.
Uh, okay, so um, th those combinations are what increases your, the risk of developing cancer, just like the cytomegalovirus and the glioblastoma. You don't necessarily want to <coughs> focus so much on the glioblastoma. Now, sp speaking of cancer, I am developing a, uh, a seminar about uh, uh, immunotherapy for cancer as we do it. You know, looking at these immune factors, um, looking at these immune factors and which ones to uh, find, uh, you know, like her immune system, you know, it's, it's, it's happening. It's interleukin-1, interleukin-12, you know, those are immune factors. So <clears throat> let's say we could determine that there's a cancer. Now, I mean, it's a fact that a lot of people already have cancer, so we, we, we should be able to help them too, right? And I know there's a big demand out there, and I, I've been working on it for, for years, and, uh, you know, next next year in October, and well, I'm, I'm ready to unveil some, <coughs> some of my findings and what we can do in that regard, just like uh, what the biotech companies are doing with their immunotherapies, some which are rather successful. And, and what they're doing is they're mimicking the body's immune system and, and they're duplicating and fermenting these immune factors if they can, if they can identify them. And so we're going to do the same thing, except we're doing it energetically and we're going to resonate with the, the genes behind these factors and make them work hard 24 seven to produce these immune factors. Okay. To, um, Anyway, so that, that's the gist about, about that. In the meantime, we're already doing that. Uh, we're, we're just, uh, you know, at the moment, um, uh, I, I really don't have much advice. On, uh, I'm, I'm very much focused on preventing cancer, and that's, uh, that's how we do that. Uh, <coughs> so, so that's what I want you to, to think. You know, I want, I want you to think prevention. So don't be scared about these so-called oncogenes, the gene repair genes. So it's good to look at these things in a timeline. So let's say one of these genes comes up repeatedly. That, that, that will be of some significance also. You know, uh, it's coming up today and it came up last week and it's coming up next week. It would just... Um, so in any case, uh, so if you're just very worried about it, uh, to put that gene into a treatment does not really, I do not believe that it poses any danger, even let's say it does not need to be, uh, you know, I mean, who decides what it needs to be or not needs to be, but, uh, uh, you know, I put my faith completely in whatever feedback I get from the body. So if the body says it doesn't need to be done, I don't do it. Uh, and then, you know, there's all these other tricks you can do if it does need to be done. So, I mean, I do treat a few, a few people, you know, that have cancer and stuff, and now for other reasons too. Uh, and then it turns out that if there is a gene that's kind of not working right, that's very rusty or so, then sometimes you really, instead of doing all these treatments for the same gene, you know, you, you, you imprint the frequency of that particular gene into a bracelet, for example, and you can wear it, wear it for one, anywhere between one and six weeks. Usually it's the longest it's ever happened was six weeks. <clears throat> and then uh, because there's a lot of genes, you have to realize, you know, these are just two genes out of millions. So, and then, and anyway, if you look, uh, I can't show you that right now, but if you look at genetic testing, you know, it's like, huh, work of two, has dozens of subsections, you know, there's all these, it's not just one gene, it's BRCA2 is like, and, and the more research they do, you know, the more detailed these genes become, and uh, it gets complicated. Uh, okay, and, and, and just, you know, just, just for the record, uh, men also have the same genes, and they're just, you know, just as important for men, except they haven't been associated with, you know, breast cancer and ovarian cancer. They're not just female genes by any means. As we get more and more genes into the program, uh, you'll see them pop up and it's, it's good feedback. But remember, they, they show up because they are active and they're, 
most of the time they're active for a good reason. Sometimes they're active. Sometimes they show up because they uh, they're just not they're not working right, and uh, you have to associate it with the um, uh, just with the, with, the, with the patient in front of you and with the, with the situation. You know, like that one that one gene I was uh, the one result like this one I was showing to you. I mean, this 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 was beautiful. It's beautiful. This, this is like a person's genes functioning just beautifully, like they're supposed to. You know. In fact, <clears throat> I'm thinking that you know, in a bunch of years down the road, the scan results it will more look like this and less like uh, all this other stuff that we're looking at right now to get guidance, viruses, and this and that and other thing. And we'll, we'll, we'll be more just kind of. Harmonize, uh, kind of figuring out which gene needs a little more attention, which gene needs to be uh, resonated with and upregulated a little more, and which gene needs to be downregulated. Uh, okay, but basically, this is a feedback. This is a scan result, not of genes not functioning properly, but genes actually supposed to, uh, doing what they're supposed to do, happening. You know. Sorry, Dr. Strayel, This is Heidi. Oh, hi, Heidi. Hi. Um, so I do a lot of genetic testing. Um, and oh. so there's one gene that I'm really curious about uh, among all the other ones, but it's the SOD gene, um, the superoxide dismutase. And right. I see a lot of people getting a lot of inflammation when that is upregulated. Have you worked with that? Because right now I'm giving them the SOD and they have to take the enzyme, but I would love to be able to just run this and have it get back balanced have you have you run because i can see that in real time if it's working or if it's not so it's called uh superoxide dismutase so you find that 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 does what comes up a lot as a problem well uh, yes just when i test their gene it comes up a lot um, it, oh, when I did, oh, 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 in, a genetic, yeah, in, a, in, a, in a genetic testing result? In a genetic testing, right, in a, in a physical genetic test. Um, right. The people that have those variances, then I see a lot of inflammation. That um, they ha If they don't take the enzyme, then they're going to have a lot of inflammation. I would love to be able to just treat them this way. And uh -huh. I haven't had this machine long enough to run it, but I'm just curious if you've done that. Because I can see when they take the enzyme and when they don't, or, you know, so yeah. I would love to be able to do it this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I've used superoxide dismutase as a supplement, but I, I, I can't report the same great results that, that you are. Uh, maybe I've, I've, but anyway, lately, yes, I've been, uh, uh, I don't quite understand why, uh, why it's not showing up here. Um, Okay. Uh, it, it's is SOD. Uh, is it in your? I have multiple SODs now. Uh, is it in yeah, your version of the software? Do you um, have it in your time in? I haven't seen it. Oh, oh, oh. okay. You need to upgrade. Uh, okay. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll send. Just send me an email to remind me, so I'll send you the password and everything. And as I said, you're gonna have to. Uh, maybe it's in. Maybe it's in the new. Uh, it's in the new version. Uh, I thought it was in the old version also, because now there's SOD1, SOD2, and I believe SOD3. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm meeting with, by the way, with uh, Bob Miller uh, in Hershey uh, next weekend. And to talk about just that, I want to combine these results, test, test results from the genetic testing and corroborate them somehow with with the results of the scan in order to somehow get better information on what, you know, a suggestion from your software, which genes to treat. So, so anyway, I, I mean, I'm working on that, uh, improving that capacity. But in the meantime, uh, well, uh, upgrade your software and then treat people for that gene, you know, and, and see what happens. In my experience is it works much better than supplements. So I would expect that if you treat them energetically for that gene, that, that first of all, they won't need to supplement anymore. And secondly, and these things are pretty, 
uh, once that gene switches or it works better, it seems to be permanent, you know, it seems to stay that way. So uh, let's get everybody uh, upgraded to the new version. It's, uh, it's, it's, there's 120 new genes in there and, and, and a bunch of better explanations and stuff. That's about all that's, you know, that's, that, that, that particular upgrade is doing, but it's, it's, it's kind of important. Um, and then we'll go on. Okay, well, thank you very much. And we'll do this again. We'll do this again. <laughs>